Hello and welcome everybody as we are here for the grand finals for the Michigan Division A group and it is going to be absolutely amazing. We've already had some interesting events come up this last 45 minutes and we're going to let you in on all that info. But first I want to tell you that I am your caster Rich Red here with the Nautical as my co-caster. Nautical, how you doing today? Oh man, I'm doing great. If uh, This has just been comedy for the past 45 minutes, so <laughs> let's just it get really into has. it. It really has. So let yes, we will get into it. We've got that pro draft coming out. And just for those that are tuning in, wondering what the delay was, there was some, I believe, technical difficulties with one of the players that was trying to get in for their fifth member for Wayne Warriors. Now they have a full five stack going into this against Central Michigan. And we also unfortunately had to see one point here taken away already from Wayne Warriors because of the delay stated in the standard rules. So Michigan actually does have one point here up over Wayne. So Central's in a good spot going into this as we're going to start these picks and bans and take a look. And Central Michigan's like, I don't need to ban nobody. I've got Nocturne and Diana, and we're just going to let Wayne pick as many as they want. Oh, man. This, just, this is just absolute pure chaos, and I love it. I'm so excited to see that we finally are getting into these games, and I'm interested just to see what the team comps are going to look like. And I mean, like, you, we got a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see J4 coming out, very aggressive type of jungler early, high gank potential, a lot of team fight, fight capabilities. But the one thing I kind of want to focus on is some of the bands that are coming out here from Wayne Warriors. And the, the new new I've seen quite a bit, but Soul along with Dr. Mundo, I, just, I don't know how I feel about those. I feel like those are kind of troll picks. Is that is that just me? I don't really see that band too much. Yeah, these these bands are kind of way out there, and so uh, maybe maybe they're just purely target bands. Maybe they, you know, they've watched some of their old games or something. But yeah, they just kind of seem like very off the wall bands, and I'm not really I'm not really sure. We'll have to see what ends up getting through the draft because of that. And also, one of the things to talk about as well going into this is this is a very interesting time for this Grand Finals and going into the rest of the playoffs from GG Leagues because we did just have the patch recently drop as well yesterday for 10.8, and there has been quite a number of adjustments, specifically one that we were talking about a little bit earlier about the Felios, and even some adjustments to Rise, which was a random selection that you talked a little bit about earlier. Yeah, with the Aphelios, it's really interesting how they took away his bonus uh, percent uh, armor penetration and traded it out for lethality. So basically what I think is going to happen with that is I think you're going to start seeing more lethal tempo Aphelioses because you probably want to max the lethality either first or second. Lethality as it gets later in the game is just, you know, a worthless stat when everyone's stacking armor and it's significantly stronger in the early portion of the game. So I think we're going to start seeing lethal tempos just to get around that uh, the lack of maxing your attack speed on Aphelios. And so that's basically what I'm seeing. I could also be very wrong, but I just, I if you max lethality last, you're just basic, that's just a basic worthless stat in the late mm -hmm. game. Well, and the other part too is because we've seen Central Michigan once before on Acade specifically take the Aphelios. But because of that nerf and that adjustment, like you had just said, it could be leading towards this misfortune, which has been picked up. Going to pair it with the Braum, a nice, great assistance to support line in the bot lane. But we also want to take a look here at the side for Wayne Warriors. They've got this Zaya Thresh versus the Zaya Rakan, that lovers duo that we typically see between the two. They work so well in tandem, but the Thresh was actually picked up instead to try and counter this early pick selection from Central Michigan going into the Braum and the Misfortune. Yeah, and I actually love what CMU did here. I, I hate seeing people pick the misfortune when Braum is up. So they did a very smart thing in the draft here and picked the Braum first and then picked the misfortune. Braum, Braum's uh, wall is just so good at neutralizing the entirety of MF ult. And so you really want to either ban the Braum away if you're playing on playing MF or get it on your side. They did an excellent job of getting both of those picks. So I'm interested to see just what these team fights start to look like because you have great synergy Braum ulti over J4 ulti in the MF. That's already a massive team fight comp already. And we haven't even seen stupid and you're gonna now see the blind pick coming out here from warriors this is gonna be interesting. we've got the azir along with 
along with Orn going into this. So it looks like we're waiting on the selection. Uh, we're getting a little bit of intel from production at the moment. So we're just uh, looking to see what that is here um, just for this adjustment. I think we might actually be starting potentially the pro draft over again. Um, so just taking a brief moment to look into it. Uh, so we're going to actually just go to a brief break for a moment as we do get these challenges corrected. So don't go anywhere, friends. We'll be right back because we, just as much as you, want to see this match between Central Michigan and Wayne Warrior. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this lovely grand finals match for the Michigan division. I'm kidding. I'm really not going to do the whole feel again. Uh, <laughs> since we are back to see CMU versus Wayne. So apparently, uh, not a like... We, or, Nautical, we just found out that uh, this first set of bans uh, was all a plore. Uh, it might not actually be legitimate. Um, and <laughs> Wayne Warriors <laughs> apparently had others uh, banning for them. I've... And now we're and, <laughs> and now and now we're gonna see Misfortune banned out. I'm so so confused about what is happening right now. This entire, this entire 45 minute, hour long, you know, pure chaos is just, oh man, it's exactly what I needed during this COVID crisis. It's just, the levels of absurdity is insane. I mean, this might just be trying to throw salt in the wound from Wayne to CMU at the fact that CMU already has a point up in this as we now have the bands completed and it is going to be all six here showing in that bottom section central michigan going to strip away the zaya from wayne because misfortune was stripped away from cmu <laughs> oh man just oh i just can't wait to see like there's got to be some bm in game and oh man it's it's gonna be wild these i feel like these teams are really like they're just gung-ho to go at each other it's and oh man and I gotta say too, the fact we we have to touch on this a little bit because this was also in the recent patch notes. We outside of all of this shenanigans between the two going back and forth, we gotta talk legitimacy here. Tristana is gonna be picked up here by Wayne. We did just see a recent adjustment in the patch note 10.8. Tristana allowing that increase in the explosive charge, the percentage of bonus attack damage increasing over per point level. And honestly, already reaching that 100% at that mid game is a substantial amount. And you made a really good point about how that's gonna scale into the late game here. Yeah, at, you know, like you said, already at uh, the third point in E, you're already doing 100%, so you're already basically doing your uh, entire bonus damage plus one. And then now you're scaling to that 150% at the end game. And so she's just gonna, if she gets on carries, if she rocket jumps onto carries, she's getting that reset and she's taking over matches. So I'm just really interested to see how aggressive this Trisana plays and see and, if she can use that damage buff. And what we were seeing too here from that Wayne Warriors, taking the Zaya and going with a Thresh. We're gonna see the Zaya Rakan combination here on Central Michigan. This is something we like to see again. I talked about it earlier. Zach gonna be picked up for that jungle role. We've actually seen this before. G Mario's in the jungle has played this quite well, mind you, from previous matches as we look to see the Zach going into a Sejuani picked. And Sejuani really has so much crowd control and ability to lock down members of the opposing side and oppress against this. I'm really interested to see the synergy so far with the three selected here by Wayne Warriors. Yeah, uh, I, the Zag pick is kind of interesting to me. Like, you do get the nice hard engage from the Zag, but if you look strictly on the three picks that Wayne already has, uh, Tristana, uh, the her ultimate, she just knocks Zag pretty much out of the sky. Thresh, if he lands that Flay, Flays him out of the combo. Sejuani, you just ult the Zag coming in. Like, that's already, like, three hard disengages. But the the good thing about this, though, for at least CMU, is they also have that Rakan engage as well. So if the Zac, uh, if the Zac engage gets snuffed, then the Rakan just comes right after and basically does the same thing. So it's going to be really on Wayne to make sure they don't blow all of their CC trying to disengage that Zac. And we're going to also focus on Zoe getting banned out. We were making the jokes amongst each other, saying that the player from Wayne has taken a nap, that trouble bubble, keeping him asleep as CMU now is going to ban that out. We don't want no sleep here. We want some fun good matchup here between the two of them and you can really see a lot of hard focus on the attention to detail to this potential patch adjustment now that you're also going to see wayne pick up the oriana had some subtle buffs as well going into this both the rise and the oriana for that 
control mage got a buff going into this the increase into the command protect specifically by increasing the point ability power ratio along with the ally haste and enemy slow as a whole so there's a lot of mobility coming out as well from wayne to try and compete against central michigan yes uh this oriana pick kind of confuses me though because you don't really have anyone on your team that's going to be grouping up together we'll have to see what this last pick is but uh, it looks maybe like a yasuo but yeah even if so if the yasuo does get banned in here then who who crowd controls the entirety of CMU and keeping them for like a good shockwave? I mean, Karthus and Karthus and Ori are pretty much going to have the same amount of wave clear in the mid lane, so you're not getting wave priority from it. So we'll just really have to see what this Orion is going to be able to do in these team fights. Yeah, I mean, the hardest part is, is again, we've seen Karthus in a number of different places. We've seen him in mid lane. We've seen him surprisingly in jungle more recently. Again, it's been an extensive amount of time since we've seen that before. So it'll be interesting how that Karthus is going to play into this Orianna. Might feel very confident to try and compete against the Orianna, but I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity in that mid lane for the ability to maneuver around the Karthus's damage to try and sustain, even though the Karthus has a lot of poke. The other thing I'm really looking to focus on too is again that that top lane to see how this vein Yasuo is going to come out. It's it's really a big pick. I've seen Crazy Goose before completely dominate on this vein in that mid to late game. So really playing this slow early game from CMU is going to be critical to not get outmatched by Wayne entirely. Yeah, they they really said, all right, you want to pick a carry in that top lane? We'll go right back at you with the Yasuo, you know? Hopefully we don't get to see the 10 death Yasuo power spike. Maybe maybe <laughs> he's good maybe he's good enough just to just to get that power spike throughout the game, but hey, if Yasuo reaches 10 deaths, you know, the game the game automatically loses for the other team. Oh, agreed. And and we also see almost that uh comparable competition between the Tristana now having that really late game opportunity as long with Vayne being that hyper carry. Again, those bolts just being able to stack all three, the true damage is so heavy on that high health value, focusing down potentially Sejuani on an engage. And at this point now you have the Tristana again in that mid game, once that third point is in there, a hundred percent of that increased damage. So this will be really, I think a lot of attention if it does enter into that late game, how the maneuverability of both Cade on the Vayne and this Tristana from Wayne Warriors is going to come out in extensive team fights. Yeah, it's going to be very tricky for Wayne to figure out how to get on these two carries. You know, you, you have the Vayne with the final hour and then the tumble, and then now you have the Zaya with the ult. Like, it's just, it's so difficult, I feel like, for Wayne to get on any of these carries and lock them down. And unless the Orion is getting uh, her ball in just a bush and then, you know, shockwaving off that, I don't see how she's going to get a massive shockwave on any of these carries. It's going to have to be where Wayne plays, I think, a little bit more passively, where they have to wait to see what Central Michigan is going to do to enter into a situation that's going to be less advantageous for them, specifically trying to play some of the jungle corridors after potentially that first objective is taken down. The tower on that first line of defense, I think, is going to be critical to earn from Central Michigan to try and take advantage over Wayne Warriors, who, again, right now, doesn't, like you said, has that opportunity of really locking down those heavy mobile characters in the back line yeah i'm really interested to see how this game plays out it seems like we got a lot of like interesting interesting picks maybe uh maybe the subtle jabs at each other you know we're i think we're gonna see an explosive game i don't i don't see this you know turning into a 20 minute farm fest and then team fighting i see these i see these teams just going at each other well, and the fact that we already know that Central Michigan has a point up here over Wayne Warriors because of the delay on the first game, there is that dynamic of now you want to try and just stick it to them and say, let's get these two matches, show them that despite our one point deficit, we're going to take this back in this best of three in this grand finals for the Michigan Division A. And again, this is Division A. We've got a lot of great talent here amongst these two teams. I've been able to see it here from Central Michigan. So I'm really interested to see exactly how Wayne Warriors are going to pull this off and try and compete against this Central Michigan team. But we're going to go to a brief break here for a brief moment, allowing you to take another few moments to sit back, get your drink, get your snacks, and see who will claim this Division A Michigan Grand Finals.
Uh, hi, I'm Michael. I'm one of the co-founders of GG Leagues, and I hope all of you guys are staying safe and healthy. Hi guys, I'm Abby. Um, most of you probably know me as Not Too Shabby in the Discord, and I am your resident league manager for GG Leagues. Yeah, and uh, I'm Griffin Kemp. I am a marketing intern here at GG Leagues. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't work at Cloud9, I'm sorry. Hey everyone, this is Eric from GG Leagues. Um, with the coronavirus sweeping the globe, I know it's been a stressful time for everybody. Even though we joke as gamers that it hasn't really changed our lives at all. Um, but, you know, with that, we wanted to take some time to update all of you on how the coronavirus has affected our leagues and our company. Um, we also wanted to share a little bit how we're helping to maintain the esports community and camaraderie during this difficult time. And first off, really, in the interest of everyone's health and safety in the middle of this pandemic, you know, we have unfortunately had to cancel all of our in-person events for this season. You know, this is really not an easy thing for us to, to do because we really love seeing everyone come to our in-person and final and really get to meet everyone um, in person. We wanted to bring some of our sweet props so that way everyone can kind of take pictures <laughs> of that also. Uh, and so we really, really thank all of you guys who have worked with us to host these in-person events. And we really appreciate your excitement and hard work. And we really want to thank you guys as players who are planning on coming out to our in-person event. As a result of this pandemic though, we will be finishing our spring seasons completely online with playoffs and finals running as planned, but unfortunately it will just be online. We're holding a vote to see what other types of rewards you guys would want as a community. So please go to your Discord and be sure to vote in that. Yeah, and I know that, you know, GG Leagues has spread pretty far in terms of what states we encompass, but if you didn't know, we're actually based in Chicago. So for us here, we've all been working from home to protect ourselves and to slow the speed that the virus spreads to others, because we know that it's not just about us, it's not just about you guys, it's about our families, it's about everybody in our community, it's about making sure we're protecting each other, right? And so we're all still dedicated to bringing you the same league experience that you've had the entire time, but it's just gonna be online mostly. For sure, and I mean, you know, even amidst all the disruption caused by the whole coronavirus pandemic, you know, our mission to build community and really connect gamers to each other really remains the same. And so, you know, we've seen people in the esports community, some of them being you guys, um, you players here in GG Leagues, organize hangouts, tournaments, events, and uh, everything to support the community during uh, these tough times and everything. Uh, these, the great thing about esports is its versatility and its ability to connect um, people no matter how far apart we are. You know, we at GG Leagues want to continue connecting gamers to each other, but for now, only, um, only from the comfort of each gamer's houses. With so many schools already in a remote learning environment, um, we here at GG Leagues want to make sure that we can continue to support you guys. Um, building gaming communities has always been what our biggest passion and mission is here at the company. And so we're thinking of ways that we can continue to help your gaming communities stay connected while everyone's away from campus. That's why for the duration of um, the whole coronavirus pandemic, we're offering to support intramural leagues for Rocket League and League of Legends to all interested schools for free as a way to keep the students engaged and connected with one another as everyone's away from school. Um, the intramural leagues themselves will be competitions that allow students within the school to play in a casual, fun way against one another. Um, the leagues will run roughly, roughly six weeks and will be completely online. How they'll work is GG Leagues will set up a league on our website, make it easy for your school to invite players into the league um, and then from there you'll get used you'll get access to the same gg leagues experience that you see in our statewide leagues where we'll create the leagues we'll update the standings we'll create the schedule um, and we'll provide referees to make sure everything runs smoothly all the schools have to do is be responsible for getting word out about this opportunity to your community so either showing blasting it in your Discord, sharing it with students that are away from um, from school, um, and just getting people signed up. We'll have three different potential start dates for this, um, either April 7th, April 13th, or April 20th. Um, and so if this is something that you're interested in, definitely let us know. 
So as Eric was saying, if you're interested in, you know, hanging out with me, my referees, some fellow students from your school, even if there's some staff who are interested, send us an email at intramurals at ggleagues.com. Put the subject line as something like, my school's interested in doing an intramural league. And please, in the body of the email, include, you know, what state your school is in, what school, and who might be the best point of contact for those intramural leagues. And so during these hard times, um, you know, we are you know, really thankful for, you know, a whole entire community we have here at GG Leagues, not only us here at the workplace, but you guys who have been really a part of this whole thing kind of building up. And so, you know, it's really a strong reminder for all of us that, you know, why community is the driving force behind uh, not just esports, but, you know, everything that we do here at GG Leagues. And so if there's any way um, that we can help your communities out, please let us know and stay safe and healthy as we endure this pandemic. Thanks a lot, everyone. Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we are here to finally, after much anticipated waiting, the game between Central Michigan University and Wayne Warriors. And again, I am your caster, Rich, right here with Nautical. Nautical, as we see these teams go head to head right now, what do you think this early game is going to look like? Who should we focus on to see making some serious plays? Uh, I, you know, we got to focus on that top lane, the Vayne versus uh, Yasuo. Or actually, it might look like, according to the scoreboard, it might look like it's Vayne versus Ori. So that's that's an even more interesting matchup to look at. It just really depends on who we see in this top lane, who we see going up against this Vayne. Yeah, that is quite surprising. Yeah, you're correct. Oriana in the top lane here. I wouldn't be surprised to see that potential rotation from that mid to top lane position just to try and make sure that that, you know, AP champ to AP champ is there. You've got Central Michigan at least sticking close together, not wanting to risk anybody coming towards that red buff early on this first pickup by Why Fight Me. And again, Zach from Why Fight Me has been very on point, very managing of each of these lanes early in the game. So that's another thing I really want to watch to see how much applied pressure these two junglers can give especially because this mid and top lane might have just rotated in position yeah it looks like it's being matched over here by the side of cmu so hey looks like we get the mid versus mid and top versus top anyways and I'm curious to see how that's going to play out because now there has to be a lot more awareness from these top laners in this mid lane because of that two prong position of engage by why fight me or from the Zijuani by Astark. And as we keep a look at this mid lane, the fact that there's at least that wind wall coming up to try and block some of the shots from Akade, that's going to be very helpful, but there's still a lot of poke potential again, and you already see it happening early by Akade to get that lead and really control the lane. Yeah, absolutely. I actually, you know, I like this, uh, this swap up here by the Warriors. You're putting that Vayne in a position where it's a lot easier for her to get ganked. That Zijuani can come from any of these areas. So, yeah, it, you know, normally whenever you pick Vayne top, you really want to just run at that melee top laner and you want to get them down Ooh. pretty early. Oh, wow. Nice engagement going in. Lane. Yeah, goodbye, Rakan, getting that utility out of the way early, finding almost a pick. There's been some decent trade on both health values, a lot of pots coming out here by Central Michigan early, but the aggression forward and starting to really try to capitalize on this CS count is there from Central Michigan. Even though this is all happening, Wayne is still sticking close with that Tristana and Thresh looking for that hook. Yeah, and just to kind of go back to the point I was making, uh, usually Vayne wants to bully super hard. Basically, she can't bully as hard. She's still going to be bullying, but not nearly as hard just with the extra gank options that are coming out of the side of Warriors by being in the mid lane. So, yeah, we'll just have to see how far ahead this Vayne can get. Ooh, forcing out the flash on the top lane. Nice job by Wi Fight Me. Looking to try and get at least some follow up here, but the orb comes out to give some protection for Oriana by taping this top lane and going to reset as Zach is now going to look to potentially rotate to that mid lane. But all the while in this bot lane, you've got the Sejuani starting to move in. Has been acknowledged. The hook comes through, doesn't get the sidestep. Tristana diving in, gets a lot of damage onto this. The Ignite comes through, but the stun and heal come out to try and give some support to G Mario, managing to escape as Sejuani goes in a little bit too aggressive here to try and go for the kill flay from perfect hoping to get crazy goose out for maybe a tristana follow but tvo is so low here it is far too risky yeah honestly i would have liked to have seen the tristana play a little bit more aggressive 
she has the she has the heal versus uh, no heal on the side of CMU. Ooh, and she definitely could have gotten that. Too. Yeah, I agree with you. That trade could have gone in favor, but again, now looking to reset, and Tristan is going to have to play this carefully, especially because Thresh has started to move away from the lane. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, well, it looks like the Vayne is slightly ahead of the Yasuo, which uh, I expect to see happening, especially with the Sejuani showing bot lane. So we'll just have to see. Like like I said, we're just going to have to keep eyes on this Vayne. How far ahead can she get of this Yasuo? And... E also kind of rotating up to this top lane it's about an even trade between both prine and tape slight advantage with the poke early by prine but now that the abilities start to roll in reaching that level four starting to stack those abilities but in the bot lane zach's gonna go in why fight me looks for a chance gets the grab mid jump tivo going to go down very very low the shield comes out by perfect but the execution comes through while the dive follow up here towards that mid lane multiple lanes having action prine gonna go in the flash comes out knowing that that engagement is there just dodging out of the way having enough mana to try and get some damage onto tape all in all one-to-one -one kill ratio across this map so far and you said it at the start this is going to be an intense match between both of these teams yeah i mean we just saw like so many crazy plays happening there the thing i really want to focus on is that bot lane play uh we saw the outplay by actually both teams there the zat getting the perfect uh blob grab and uh forcing the Tristana out of her jump. And then the Tristana actually dodged the pass through Feather from Zaya on the Thresh. So that actually kept her alive, forcing the Zaya to have to go a little bit further under tower. And that gave the ability to, for the Thresh to pick up that kill off the tower damage. So a couple of big outplays on both sides. That was actually incredible to watch. And this is what we look to see, especially like we said earlier, that Division A ranking teams going at it head to head and again this is the grand final so it is all on the line but wayne is still at the deficit one point already sh to chicago michigan for those that are just tuning in now the block going to come out not going to get that bolt to come through that energy consistently generating by short in this mid lane to try and compete against a cade and like you said the vein's still trying to take advantage of this because of that poke potential versus the melee from yasuo yeah, uh, this this matchup is really going to change once Yasuo hits level 6. At that point, this matchup purely becomes skill. It's how can can the Yasuo hit his uh, tornado? Can the Yasuo wall off the dam the vein from damage? Or, the sorry, the damage from vein. So, you know, as soon as this Yasuo hits this 6 point, it's, it's purely skill matchup. So I'm excited to see the crazy fights we're about to get to witness. And there's a potential collapse coming in from top lane by prine knowing that oriana is missing you do have a cade playing very far south in this mid lane because that oriana is sticking in the bush tape exposes themselves the rotation down to dragon and that objective here in this opportunity is going to potentially go in favor of wayne while why fight me waits yeah uh i i think this is a little bit mistimed by the dragon honestly maybe oh oh, oh yeah there you go Steel manages to use the Rakan dash first to draw attention away while Zack cleanly dives in over the wall, takes the dragon, and now has a dragon buff lead here. And again, it was the ocean dragon allowing that health per five increase to stack up and already looking to continue taking this top tower with the ult coming through just to try and apply some pressure and cancel those backs. Yeah, I was I was really wondering because I also was sitting at level five for a long time. I'll talk about it after this fight. Ooh, but there's a nice disengage coming through. You do have perfect wall managing to at least get the follow through slightly, but Sejuani too far in the back. Now with Why Fight Me over the wall. Might look for a jump here. Does attempt this diving onto TVO. Here is the disengage coming through. The flash comes out, the pull onto the minion. Trying to close the gap, not gonna be enough, but perfect forces the flash, the hook and return. Damage from the Tristana. The concussive explosion comes through, can't get the kill. Nice survival from Wayne as they will be able to skirt out of this just in time for a potential back, but they're not out of this fight just yet here, potentially. Oh, man. These teams are just going at each other. It looks like the Zack is going to have to pay for that. And you're going to have the passive come through. Is there some coverage by G Mario on the bot lane? Not going to be able to do anything. Tio actually gets the kill in this and tries to be able to counter this Zaya play. Now hoping to use that gold to the advantage. The Zaya and Rakan looking to try and bait out that teleport to play a little bit further. And because of the laning 
slightly going in favor of Wayne here. There's a chance to potentially hard push this tower if they want after clearing to get a few of those plates. Yeah, so looks like we have a little bit of a lull, so I can finally go back to my point. Uh, I think Warriors just got a little too aggressive with that Dragon Call. Uh, the Ori coming down actually took uh, actually took experience away from that Yasuo, and I moused over the Yasuo. And the Yasuo actually was like a couple of a couple of XP away from leveling up. So that Ori really took away that level 6 power spike from the Yasuo, and he didn't have it for that fight. We actually could see a rotation here. You've got the adjustment. The Yasuo will play from short up top, trying to harass Prine as Y fights me still sticks towards that top region. The Oriana versus Vayne in this mid lane now is going to be interesting to see how it plays out here. Still having at least some range capabilities by tape, along with the ability to try and shut down that m movement from Akade on the Vayne. Yeah, this they're just moving all over the map, man. They just want they just want this vein to get in a good matchup. Prime gonna get aggressed on once again, trying to attempt some exchange of damage, but that mobility again by the SUO. Now the dive comes through again. Also in top lane. Why fight me? Just gonna move past that wall to block anything. High amounts of damage. Prime gets the pick. And as we've seen in matches before, if Prime gets a lead, it is substantial and carried over very well into the mid lane. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just don't know, man. That was why. As we take a look now towards that bot, you do see. Let's let's take a look at this. You've got the Tristana now starting to surpass in the CS count. Just managing to find the opportunity. That clear rate is so much higher. I feel if there is room given, especially by how this Thresh is playing. Even though multiple fights have gone more so in favor of Central Michigan, just because of the support from Why Fight Me on that jungle role, Zach. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot about earlier about the... Oh, sorry. Uh, we talked a lot about that fight, or the damage buff earlier, but we we didn't talk about how well it cleared minions out. You know, now she clears minions exceptionally well with that uh, explosive charge. So now she just pushes that lane in for free. And you've got the Rift Herald coming out. Why fight me? Taking advantage again of the objective. The Dragon first now having that Rift Herald. The rotation coming out here from Aztark, though, with the Thresh play and Tristana abandoning the bot lane to try and heavily focus and prevent that Rift from getting any sort of advantage on the tower. Most likely going to lose just a slight amount of plates, two to be exact here from that. And bot lane's going to play very aggressive forward as you have both supports trying to rotate back to the bot. But Prime going to flash in. The ult comes through, managing to take down Prime but here comes the potential ultimate. The Q not going to land. Here's the follow-up and will not be able to get the kill on to their challenger short stack on the top lane with Sejuani coming in for some assistance and might just force down this turret. Yeah, what an exceptional play there to catch out the Karthus and not die to the ult Q combo at the end. So, you know, that just gives them so much pressure up there. Now I'm excited to see where they, uh, where they maneuver that pressure. It looks like we got the Sejuani going mid lane. So we'll have to see if this vein can, uh, you know, snuff it out and come back a little bit. We also have to talk about the amount of damage in addition from Tristana going on to these turrets. There is a lot really revolving around that buff that had come through. Tristana, I feel, is going to be a lot more of a relevant pick now trying to compete against these teams. And now you've got Central Michigan trying to force this dragon. Multiple members going back. You know that Yasuo, along with Thresh, have backed in clear vision for Central Michigan, allowing you have Why Fight Me taking this quickly and now going to have that addition of the Cloud Drake. The ultimate reduction is critical, especially when it comes to these potential fights here for all characters but Karthus especially with that global ultimate damage yeah I'm we we definitely got to see who these dragons go to next because I feel if the warriors get this then the Karthus I mean the Karthus is still gonna hurt obviously but maybe you're not one-shotting the carries in fights so it's really gonna come down to who who gets these dragons Nice job here by Why Fight Me too. getting another flash out by tape. We saw it earlier in the top lane. Consistent pressure here again in that mid lane. A lot of vision being forced out and really drawing attention from these lanes away from the bot lane to make sure that you have Thresh seeking out these wards and finding a difficult position to try and compete against this. You've got a lot of more of a vision score here by Thresh to really compete against Rakan. And you can just see it 22 to that 10 in total to show that Thresh has been on top of this vision game to try and not allow any more advantage to Central Michigan. 
Yeah, and it, it's actually like very impressive on the Thresh's part because they've been, you know, they've been ganked, they've been constantly fighting, and to keep that vision score up for them is actually absurd. So good on this Thresh for just making sure that, you know, maybe they're getting, maybe they're taking a lot of fights, maybe they're getting ganked a lot, but he's making sure they got that vision down and being ready to prepare to go on. Yeah, so Juani here playing a little aggressive in the opponent's jungle. There is a ward in try, so you will have Crazy Goose and G Mario aware as Why Fight Me hides in the bush. Look, potential 3v3 here. Holding out for that jump in the backside. TVO and Perfect playing. Aggressive waits for the engage to start. Now diving in. They are unaware of this, and you see an absolute massive amount of damage laid down. TVO gets picked up as well with G Mario tanking the kill, and that is a beautiful play by Central Michigan, completely turning that fight because of the lack of awareness that Wayne had on that Zach play. Uh, you know... It was, it's the typical caster curse. We had just talked about how good this Thresh was playing, <laughs> and he still he goes in for the engage after he clearly saw his Sejuani going up the river. As, yep, soon as, he, as soon as he go up the river, he can't go for that play. And now you see a complete dive of three under the turret. Why fight me feeling confident and manage to leap over the wall to just get away from the Oriana. The slingshot comes through just quick enough. And now you see just under a 2k gold lead for Central Michigan after that beautiful three kill in the bot lane. Well organized. And now you have this Tristana Thresh going to have to play catch up here. Yeah, I'm not really sure. We saw the uh, Karthus ult there in that fight even after the Sejuani had already died. So I'm not sure if that was a misclick by Prine or if that was just a, uh, hey, don't even look to try to attack my friends. You're going to be weak. Ooh. Thresh going to actually try to counter. Box going to come down. You've got the dive by TPO in the back. Does get a huge explosive amount of damage in return. Saying, you may have gotten that exchange earlier. But now I'm going to try and do what I can. Akade teleporting in. The flay to keep some distance. But those bolts stacking up quickly. The condemn gets the double. The other auto did not come through to stack all three. And just barely saved the life of Perfect. I do not think this Tristana has held Flash in this game for more than two minutes. Every time we pan down to this bot lane, she is blowing Flash. Luckily, that in that specific in that specific scenario, it turned out well for them. But man, this Tristana just is not being allowed to keep her Flash very long. Well, and we can also say the same for the Oriana play coming out from tape. The fact that Why Fight Me has fixated on this Oriana play. Another attempt right now. Diving in. The Rakan comes with a follow-up stun. Leaping onto Why Fight Me. The Oriana ultimate pulls multiple members, hoping that Astrak can get here to try and shut down G Mario and buy some space here for tape to compete. Ult going to be there. The trinket comes through by G Mario to support. Why Fight Me gets the kill and wants to find the exchange even further onto Sedge, but short stack at least getting some assist to get down Prine, looking to rotate, got the Blast Cone, could look to, for finding this engage, actually evades it, gets a reduction in movement, and forces Rakan back, short stack, assisted now by the Sejuani, Acta getting some assistance, G Mario looking for one, the follow-up coming out by Crazy Goose on the Zaya, and this group of three, all the way from bot lane, sweeping up through mid, has managed to shut down so much of this team of Wayne Warriors. It is going to be even more difficult now to try and counter back. Going full man mode, or I guess I should say blob mode here by Why Fight Me, does the excellent play of flashing onto the Yasuo to make sure that he can get that stretch, that second activation of Stretching Strike. Because the Yasuo was in perfect position to just E through that team, get on the other side of the wind wall that Zaya had just passed, and probably killing at least one of them. But seeing Why Fight Me go absolute man mode and flashing for that denial. Dragon going to come out to the third successful dragon here first the strip and now two confident takes after already getting three members of wayne warriors down this is just a snowball from central michigan concerned about how the early game would go since they have been heavily dominant in the mid to late game the fact that central michigan played this so well has really in addition snowballed to this mid game yeah the only scary thing about it though is that right now we're 18 minutes in and it's only Barely a 2,000 gold lead, maybe just a little bit under. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, you know, CMU has gotten enough of a gold lead to transition that into the mid to late game. 
where they can a afford like a couple of mistakes in some fights. They really have to still be on their toes and playing these fights well. They cannot afford to give this Tristana any resets in fights. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree with you. And really trying to see how that front line handles it. Again, short on this high ground, looking to collapse. Prime, Mr. Tornado can't seem to get that follow. Damage is going to evade away using that minion with a nice stun onto the Rakan as well to prevent that change up in advantage with Oriana forcing the TP and a collapse potentially coming in here as well. Yeah, man, uh, the Rakan literally saved the Karthus there. If that Rakan had been a second later, Yasuo actually would have just probably taken that ult to kill him. I don't know if he would have been able to kill the Rakan or maybe they would have actually been able to turn it, but just perfect timing by the Rakan there. And now as we see a lot of attention towards this top region, the Baron about to be available. The Rift Herald, since there's 30 seconds left, it's a risky play to try and start this. You might have Y fight me, try to engage it. Looks to hopefully get enough damage here, especially with the Zaya nearby to grab it just before the Baron. And this could be a well-timed exchange to get the Rift Herald as the Baron comes up. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see at the exact timing, you know, Doing it like this is a little bit funky, but I think they got the damage to do it. Well, there we go. Yeah, that vein also rotating up, getting that true damage. As you can see, the summoning creature around that outer ring available. The Rift Herald could actually... Oh, an exchange is going to come through. Vein versus TVO on this Tristana. The explosive damage about evening the health values. I'm really curious to see where this Rift Herald is going to be dropped. And if there is going to be a quick rotation to try and take Baron while it's up. Yeah, if we do see that, I mean, we very rarely do see the Herald with the Baron, but those pushes are always extremely powerful. It's going to really depend on uh, if they can get a pick before, because if they, if uh, CMU gets a pick before, then they shred this Baron. They have the Vayne with the true damage and the Blade of the Ruined King. They have a Zaya who's almost on her Infinity Edge. They have a Karthus, consistent damage. You have Zach who can tank it up. You got Rakan who is shielding and healing everybody. So they have a very healthy Baron take and a very fast Baron take. As we see a nice rotation, you're going to have tape drop into the bot lane to try and clean up that minion wave to hopefully get some slow push onto the turret. And at this point, you have Wayne Warriors kind of in disarray, not knowing exactly what to do here because Central Michigan has been playing this so strategically and taking advantage of the objectives. Mid and top lane turrets almost about to fall. So this is going to open up a lot of opportunity for potential future engagements. Yeah, one thing I do like to see is that even though Wayne Warriors is kind of in like a we don't really know what to do right now since, if you look towards the Baron Pit, they do have three wards mm -hmm. looking at all of those choke points. So at least they have vision if CMU tries to go to Baron. So Now the you know, dive they... comes in. Oh, just misses. Well, and to piggyback off of yours, look at the ward score for this Thresh play by Perfect. Double any other individual in this game right now. Yeah, this Thresh is just, he's literally putting his team on his back purely through vision, trying to be like, guys, we got to get something. And now the Dragon will be up in 50 seconds. That is most likely the next focus. You've got TVO finding Why Fight Me out in the open to get at least a small amount of damage. With tape going to be collapsed on, is there enough of a rotation by Wayne to try and compete against this? The ult comes through. That's a significant amount of damage with that Blade of the Rune King, or a no, correction, with the BF Sword and also that completed uh, essence as well. Thresh going to look for the hook, not going to find it. At this point, you have to have Wayne bail out of this. This is not a good fight position for them with Prime starting to move in. Yeah, I, I don't know what the Oriana was thinking there. Why would you flash ult on top of yourself? Like, give yourself, give yourself and your team some time to work. Oh, beautiful lantern coming out from Perfect to get the, the Sejuani out of that fight, but the collapse comes in. Why fight me? Diving in the back line, super low. Passive going to be activated as the Yasuo ultimate does at least lift up one, but G Mario responding back, taking down short. Why fight me? Sacrificing himself to draw attention away, dropping the Rift Tail, rotating to Dragon, and they are in a stellar position to apply so much pressure onto Wayne. EMU just gets everything there. They won the 4v5. They had the vein put slip pushing in the top side. They dropped the Herald. You're, they're getting this soul. Oh, man. That was just complete slaughter on the side of CMU. I mean, at this point, this is Central Michigan's game to lose. 
It is going to be an extensive amount of work. The dive now from Why Fight Me. The competence tape gonna be picked down. The bolts come through by a Cade. The now bashing skull of that Rift Herald tanking down another turret as the redemption comes through by the Rakan. A Cade continuing to deal damage. The alt just about to fade as Short will get knocked into the air. The follow through by a Cade in the back, focusing the tower, getting rid of that outpost of damage as Sejuani goes down. Crazy Goose wants the execution as well as a Cade does. The flash, the follow through, there's the ace! That's going to be Central Michigan dominating in this mid lane with so much in their favor, they could just crack open the Nexus. Oh my gosh, just the absolute just killer instinct to say, no, we're ending the game here. This is wow, going to job. be it. The four votes to surrender. This is going to make a one match victory with the early loss coming out because of the delayed start. Central Michigan University claiming this grand finals in the Division A group. And what a match to show Wayne Warriors that we may have waited, but we waited to show you that we can still take this no matter what. Yeah, just, oh man, CMU, they just turned it on out of nowhere. The game was just going at such like a, like a slow, very casual pace. A lot of fights, but not too much coming out of those fights. And then just out of nowhere, just exploding the game, saying, we're ending this now. We're getting soul. We don't even need the Baron. We're going straight down mid lane and just taking everybody with us. I mean, and we were talking about it not being a short game, but we were standing corrected with a 24 minute and 15 second game here to see Central Michigan take it. And if we take a look at the scoring here, we've got this Zaya pumping out so much damage. We were talking about the vein really being the one that anchor in the back trying to just shell out that damage from those bolts, the silver tips managing to get that true damage shred. But Zaya in the grand scale of this just did so much work in these team fights because there was always space given for her to pump out every ounce onto the enemy. Yeah, and she you, she fully used everything in her arsenal in that last fight. Uh, we saw her flash ult for the Tristana to get that kill. We saw her go around the tower just to take everything out get around that wind wall man she just said no i'm putting the game on my back we were talking about the van the whole time can't forget about the zion the bot lane well i mean it it was definitely a interesting start to this best of three but what an exciting game to watch despite and again for those that are tuning in definitely go to all of the gg league links down below in the channel so you can be up to date on all of these grand final matches again we have the rest of this week going into the next and even after for bringing you some exciting grand final matches i have been your caster here rich rad with nautical and it has been a pleasure nautical to be able to cast with you i haven't had the chance to do so so far and it's been a stellar opportunity to be casting tonight yeah, thanks, man. I think your energy just kind of radiated through the stream, and I was like, all right, let's go. I'm ready. So, yeah, uh, it was really amazing to uh, cast with you as well. And we want to throw some serious thanks out to our production. We do have the amazing Sam always gives us that lovely vision here of the game and putting it all together for you to see it. So take care. Happy gaming. Look to see you tomorrow for some, or correction, next week for some more action of this GG Leagues. Again, go to those socials down below. Make sure that you can follow every ounce of information about the organization. So take care. See you later, friends. And always bring the hype. GG. Yeah! Well, that was a lot. It was. But that was... That was fun. That was, was fun. fun. It was absurd. Absurdly fun. It was the absurd of fun kind of absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but seriously, though, that was super. Sorry for the couple times that I stepped on your toes on that because I thought We're it was still like a more going. conclusive. Hello? Stream still. <laughs> oh, is still stream going on? Woo! <laughs> I guess so. It's okay. We are still going, friends. Welcome. If you're still tuning in, I'll probably get cut off here in just a moment. Thank you for letting me know. Well, friends, it is exciting to have all of this. We're still live. You're all awesome. Hello. Abby said she could still hear us. Downward evolution.